Hello my lovely lot, it's Mega Gran here again with another episode of Vintage Story from Grimer's Vintage Story server. I hope you're all safe and well. Well, it got that time of year when I had to pick apples from my apple trees. And you can do quite a lot with apples. Some of it you saw in the last episode. You can eat them. You can store them and you can store them for quite some time. Well, depending on where you put them, I suppose. If you just have them in the inventory, they don't last very long. Several days, that's all. If you put them in storage, in a proper storage room, they can last over a year. So that is pretty wonderful. And that's where I ended up putting my pink apples, because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them. But they would be there when I did decide. And I was still quite chuffed with my basement, with the space I'd got in it. And I have been thinking quite a lot, as I've told you a couple of times in the last few episodes, thinking quite a lot about a smelter outdoors and about building one. But I was still thinking about it at this point in time. But I did enjoy all this extra space that I'd got. It was only the other day when I went outside that I thought how dark it was over there. In fact, I couldn't even see Flooza's house. It was July, I'd already picked that apple tree, and I had this thought of lighting things up a little bit on the outside. So I made a few of those oil lamps, and I thought I'd put some in this middle bit here, where I'd planted some other fruit trees. So I just placed a few around this little island, hoping that it would look quite good from where I stood on my balcony. And it did, it looked really nice. And then I thought I might put some round Flooza's house as well. And once I did and I looked at it, I had another idea. I thought I might put some lights in his house as well, make it look like somebody lived there. So I set about making a couple of lanterns, which didn't take long really, although they are quite expensive. Two of these big metal plates for one lantern. It's a bit much, is that, if you ask me? But they are effective and they are permanent, so that's quite good. And I'm quite a dab hand now at all this smithing. It doesn't take me half as long as it used to. And I don't make as many mistakes as I used to. So practice makes perfect. Well, makes better anyway. And I do quite enjoy the process. So I made two lanterns. And I thought that'd be quite effective. So that when I looked out on my balcony, it looked like I had a neighbour on the other side as well. That would do. Now, Orskill had been very busy on the server. He'd done a lot of building. This was his treasury we're going past here. Crimson King maple saplings that he'd just planted. And they would grow into nice red trees. They'd look very pretty, no doubt. But we were going past there because I was going to help Or lay a little bit of pathing between this area and Nebris's house which was out that way and they were going to go through some woods which I wasn't looking forward to at all. As you know, wolves reside in woods. I couldn't see any at that moment so I'd have to keep my ears and my eyes open. Some markers had been laid for the path so I started off by shoveling out some of the dirt along the path while Star went off to get some material to fill it in. We were making the path blocks as we went along which were a mixture of the full blocks and the slabs as well. So we could manage the elevation changes and make it a nice comfortable path to travel along. And of course, the pathing blocks enable you to walk much faster. Paths had been springing up all over the server and I wanted to make sure I could say that I'd contributed a little bit. It wasn't long as the night came along before I started hearing the distant howls of wolves. I had hoped the noises were coming from wolf traps, 
But Orr said no. So it wasn't long before I was making my way home. I'm afraid I do not like wolves, and if they're not in a pit, then they're out and about to get me. So it was time to go home. I did like the look of Maddie's house over there in the distance all lit up. And I liked the fact that I'd lit up on the other side of my house as well, because it was quite comforting. And Flooza's house looked quite nice as well. The next day I decided it was time to sort out my piggies. Now I wasn't keeping these as pets. I'd got these piggies so I could have a permanent source for food to be able to get some meat when I needed it and to be able to cook some so that I could store it for over winter. Now it can be quite traumatic killing piggies unless you bred successive generations. Now these were first generation piggies and I needed to keep breeding them until I got right up to 10 generations. After the third generation, so fourth and beyond, I would be able to cool them with just one hit with a meat cleaver. And that was way less traumatic than killing them out in the wild. So making a sensible breeder was a must. So the first thing I decided to do was to build a little pit alongside this pen. I didn't need a big one. I wasn't going to have hordes of piggies. Just enough to sustain me through winters. I put some troughs in because I'd want to feed them up. And then I thought they could get on the troughs and get out. So I put some slabs on top of those. And I wasn't really very sure whether they could get on top of those. So I extended the fences up a little bit more. And I felt that should be enough to keep them in. And I had a lot of maple. So it turned out to be maple fencing. Then I needed to get rid of the fencing in the pen. So I placed some blocks on top. And then some slabs underneath. Had to take the fences out to get the slabs in. Had to be quick though. They were quite nosy, those piggies. Kept coming across to see what I was doing. And it wasn't very long before I saw a flaw in my plan. Although there were gaps where I didn't think the big piggies could get through, the grown-up piggies, I did think the baby piggies might be able to get back up once they'd come down. And that is not what I wanted. So I had to rethink my plan and take the troughs and the slabs out. I needed to go down another layer. And once I chipped out another layer, it made perfect sense piggies would fall down here and they wouldn't be able to get back up. They'd be separated. Then all the ones at the top would go in the pot and these down at the bottom would be left to grow up and then I'd let them up in the top and breed them again. Simple. Several days later I came on the server to this gorgeous little miniature of my house and again this was all playing around with his chisel. How gorgeous was that? The next time I was on the server, it was halfway through August. And as usual, when I first come on, I went out to take in the view. It was night time and I was quite keen to see what my piggies were getting up to. So when the sun was up, I went round to have a look. And everything seemed to be nice and quiet and ordered. Until I got round to the back when I heard the deafening tones of lots and lots of little piggies, which became deafening when I inadvertently fell into the pit. But the little breeding pit that I'd made had worked very, very well, and I could only see one just on the other side of a trough, one little baby piggette left in the top. So I started working on successive generations. It was going to take a bit of time. All those little baby piggies had now grown up and I'd just got rid of all the piggies that were at the top. I'd got quite a bit of meat. I had planned to cook that up and start my winter supply by putting it into storage. And next I used whatever I had an abundance of, which just happened to be turnips. 
I put those in the troughs at the top and made ready to let the hoard in the bottom up. And I must say they were very obliging. As soon as I gave them access, up they came. There were so many. So, so many. There were far too many piggies in there. So I'd need to kill some of those as well. Oh my goodness. I soon realised I didn't need to feed the piggies in the bottom pit. You only needed to feed them, really, when you wanted them to breed. They weren't going to die. They would just be there. So that was good to know. These were Generation 3 piggies, so it was time to make my cleaver. I was so looking forward to making this cleaver, because killing piggies up to now had been quite exhausting. And quite traumatic, really. For the piggies, that is. Well, no, no, for me too, seeing the piggies being traumatised. So in the water it went, and I had my first cleaver. But it would need to wait a little bit before I actually got to use it. Because I was going back to Pathin and I decided to join up a little bit of path just outside my house. Or I'd come right up to here with the path in from Maddie's. So I decided to add a little bit of path in to the left to join up with the main road that came down from Grimer's. It didn't take that long. And although it was night time, I felt brave enough on this occasion to carry on until I'd finished it and I'd just made enough pathing blocks to finish it. I laid down soil on each side of the path and then I made some lighting. It was a little bit different to the lighting on the other side but I don't think that mattered too much. And once I got the lights on that was it for me. And once I'd gotten safely to my bridge I looked at my handiwork. I like seeing the path joined up it went straight across the front of my bridge and joined up with the two paths on either side. So that was another jobby done. And I was liking this area more and more every time I did something. But winter was coming and we'd been making plans to go down to the Snowbird Village again. And it wasn't long before we packed up some essentials and set off back down south. I had plans to explore further down south and I'd mentioned this to Grimer. So I was hopeful that we might find even warmer climbs. But for now, it was a chilly start. <laughs> Is this? Oh, geez. What? Things are getting really cold here, actually, for me, so I might want to actually stop I'm where getting, I am and yeah, I'm take care cold. of this. I'm shivering now. Yeah, that's an issue with passing through a desert. They get colder. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were going underground. I mean, we can quickly if you want to dig real quick. That good carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'll put it right here. Ooh, that's chilly. <laughs> what did I All get right, down so to? Body temperature's down to 32.5. Oh, that is chilly. I'm at 34.5 at the minute. But it's going up, so already. Take a little break. To... If only we had left earlier. Jeez. <laughs> With an enclosed campfire. Oh, my body temperature's back to normal, at least. It's still minus 14 out there. Yeah. And once we got warm again, we continued our journey. And it didn't take that long before we were approaching the site of the translocator. Or had been working on making a route through the mountain rather than us having to go over the mountain. I hadn't quite realised, though, that it was still in progress. I don't remember if these set each other off. I just want to see some explosions. Oh, look out. Whoa! Oh my goodness me! 
I thought you'd made a tunnel to the, the place we were going to. Is that what you're doing? So I'm going to go That's up. That's what he's working on. Oh, I wasn't expecting <laughs> little, that. Little that was loud. <laughs> that was loud. Oh, my goodness. It worked. <laughs> huge, huge explosion. It's a bit damp. Have you got through there? <laughs> yep. Oh, we're under the ice. Yeah, you All have right. to go underwater. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see. Down, down a hole in the water. Okay, it's then. clearly defined, right? <laughs> <laughs> the return down south. Whoops, it is. We've added a light. Yeah, you're just standing in the darkness. Oh, I left my torch. I got oh, one. There Here, you go. want one? Your lantern? I can give you a torch. I got extra torch. <laughs> All right. Ah, the snowbird. Oh, there's a big cave right there. Oh, right nice. Right down that thing. Whoa. Okay. So the journey down to the snowbird village had been largely uneventful. And once we got here, we sorted out some food, we tidied up the crops, picked any fruit that needed it, and set off to look for something more tropical. All right, Gran, you ready? I'm ready. I'm here. Where are you? Where are you, uh, are? So you want to head south? Yeah. All right, south away. that's on the other side here wow that uh yeah that's like a plateau isn't it looks really weird Kill, i killed this rabbit so i should be able to make bread later uh i don't actually know where my seconds oh there it is i see it look at this there's a little pig chilling down here <laughs> there's a few i was really looking for new vegetables from warmer climes. Something more tropical. I was wanting to see different plants. And we were finding some different flowers that were very pretty. But we were still seeing turnips and carrots and parsnips. We came across a few traders on our travels. Hector was an agricultural supplier and he had some segura fruit. I'd not heard of that before. Was that more tropical? I think it might have been. And then I spotted some kapok seeds. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'd not heard of those. Another trader called Aphid, I think, was an artisan. But I wasn't really interested in what he had. And then... Ooh, I found a, I found something! The first thing I found! There's wood Yay. and there's cobwebs and stuff. Oh, you found a ruin. And there's gears on the floor and I've no room to fit them in. There, there, pick them up. Ooh... <laughs> Nice. I did not know there were spider webs in this game. I don't know if we can pick them up or. I don't have my shoes on me. So... They don't. They don't act the same. Oh no, they do uh... act the same way as in Minecraft. Oh, I can't pick them up. Oh, there, look. With a, you can get them with a knife. I was really excited about this find, and it wasn't long before we were finding other things we hadn't seen before. I think it's funny. Oh, here's sunflowers. Oh, sunflowers. I think it's nice. funny how we have. Uh, oh, there's there's rifts. Uh, the guys just appeared right next oh, to the sunflowers. Oh, 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 oh. This is one of those big, big cathedral ones. Oh, I've never seen one of these before. Some bony. Wow. Bony That's awesome. You're nearly here. I think you are, aren't you? That's nice. I did collect some of that last time I was All in, right, in the thing. Oh, there's the pol poultices with bandages, actually. Look at look at this. It's got uh, skull heads in it, hasn't it? Yeah, that's what I was collecting there. Oh, I see. I thought they were actual skulls. Here. Yeah. Do you have Throwing a propic? Oh, Do you have a I, don't, pro I don't have one. Oh, no. I can harvest it, it says. Sagu Grand does. Saguro cactus tip with fruits. <gasps> I got some. I got one. Oh, oh, I can't pick it up. Rand does what? He's really excited what, about what this. What do I do? It's the cactus. <laughs> what, what? That's an... <gasps> I got three. I want to see just like what the propix says about it. Uh, oh. Why? Just the fruit. And when you, ha when you put it in your inventory, you don't get seed or anything. Oh. And sure. took 20 you, you days. The you got the mining backpack, so. Yeah. Ooh, Cypress. Which is already full. Will it give me a... I'm missing something. No, what didn't give me anything. Cypress. Those yellow poppies. 
Oh, there's golden poppies. Oh, golden poppies. Yeah. Right? Can those be picked up then? Okay, those yeah. poppies. Oh, yeah. I'll have some of those. We are as far from our base. Oh, wow. Look at that. And uh, we are. Yeah, same distance teleport. between the two bases. Requires tool tier one stone to break. I have like no durability. Oh, left on my knife. Rush, madding. Papyrus. Obviously with a knife on. Just. Okay, we can use eye. it instead of like cattails. Yeah, it's like the cattail equivalent. Medium. I'm going to grab the medium ones. Oh, wow. These are. Apparently. Small croton, I think it is. Can I get some of that? Crimson green. Oh, oh nice. crimson brown green. Okay, there's different types of them. Oh. So they're not going to stack, really. Uh, let me see. Like crimson two... orange. Brown green. They're all like different. Brown green. Medium What's brown this green. This one I can probably stack. Medium sure. Yeah. What have I got? Okay. Small. Uh, medium. Small. It's that one green. I've got. Yeah. Green. Brown. That's medium. Barrel, little barrel cactus. Haha. <laughs> Oh, what's that? Like that? Termite mound. Oh, wow. Really? Here, we got found something new. Must oh. investigate. Oh. I'm going to break it. Is that something we should have? Oh. I don't know. Oh, there's termites. You picked up termites there. Oh. That's high up, isn't it, for what them? What is this thing? Oh, no. What? Is that a, a spawner or something there? It might be. Oh, my goodness. Oh, sorry. Did I hit you then? <laughs> yeah, Graham's just beating the crap out of me. It's a locust nest, a cage. I think you have to break these. There's a couple of them. Oh, things fell out of it. Oh my goodness. Get that out. Oh, metal scraps. I don't want them. I've got some cinnabar though. Is that good? Oh, oh. I don't know. Don't step on the spikes. Oh, is it that Ow. what's doing it? And there's another one up there. Let me get that one. Oh, <gasps> they're oh, dropping spiders. out. Spiders are dropping oh, out. Why would you break that? No, I didn't break anything. I was just looking up and then they all fell out. It's a spawner. It, it must be a spawner, yeah. Okay, carrot seeds. I'm going to say goodbye to carrot seeds. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's up there. Look, it's a, it must be a spawner. That one there. Oh. Can we break it? Oh, no. yeah. Well, oh, no. It. Oh, no. They're coming out. Okay, broke it. Oh, there's loads of them. It, it's broken, though. Oh, dear. Oh, I've never seen those before. <laughs> That's terrible. I don't like them. I can't tell which ones are alive. I know. I can't either. Uh, what the heck? There's a hyena here. There's hyenas. Oh! Oh, no! Yeah, there's more than just wolves. No! There's more hyenas to the left over there. Oh, there's a lot of them. Well, they usually do. They are in packs, aren't they? Yeah. That's crazy. Do you get the same thing out of them as you do? I don't know. I just know them from the creative yeah. menu. Anyone have a knife? Yeah, I've got a knife. <laughs> I've got, like, one thing left on my knife. Oh. <sighs> What do you get out of it? Oh, uh, did you wolf. get it? Oh, is, is it, it? Is it right. bush meat? Bush meat. I'd have to guess the uh, same as a wolf. And it was particularly exciting when you came across some new wood. This was ebony. And of course, I tried my hardest to get some seeds. And finding a new type of grain is very useful. There's one little one down here, too. And a big one up on that hill there. Oh, good. I got... Uh, Three the the hyenas the don't one? seem to be naturally aggressive, thankfully. Oh. There's some copper in there, some surface copper here. Oh, wow. It really does go down there. Hello. It's a building materials trader. Uh, I'm not leaving until I find bronze, one fruit tree. In bronze sword. <laughs> well, you found one, remember? One new fruit tree. Oh, new. They look kind of, well, I mean, paper. if they're like the ones that we, we have nearby, they look kind of pinkish on the map. Oh, pushy me.
Yeah, my torches went as well. I just got my lantern now. Which really, I shouldn't have them in my hand during the day because that's going to make me need I more food. I might have so messed up that there's no way. <laughs> Ooh, this looks interesting. Oh, yeah, these are looks... bamboo. Oh, what's that down there? Bamboo shoots on the floor there. Ooh, bamboo leaves I've got on those. The, um... oh, I can't pick them up just it's a minute. A... What? I've got to get rid of something to pick those up. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, what can I get rid of? So you guys are heading like, at a slight angle this time. I've got we basically went slightly to the west and then started heading north. Okay. What's this? Is this uh, mature rice? We'll have some of that. More peanuts. Grand, where are you? I'm here. I'm coming. Nice. Oops, yeah, there's mature that. ones right back here, actually. Yeah, they're good. It's good food, is that? There. Here's a seed. Oh, where am I? Good. Right here. Good. Right here's the seed. Grand. Turn around. Oh, where? 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 Oh, right missed that one. Do you have any? Do you have any actual peanuts, or are you eating those? I've got some peanuts here. Yeah, yeah. I just got a couple. Yeah, I've got. I've got three, so I'll type me over for a little bit. Oh, have this other one then that I've got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Free up an inventory. There's only one. Yeah. Nice yeah, it was a blanket. Uh, I think it was. The uh, red meat stew with oh, cat oh, no. joking. A temporal storm is approaching. Oh no! Can we get home before then? Do you uh, think? Hopefully. Okay. All right. Uh, I've got to eat my last peanut. Yeah. I won't be able to. I ate my pie, no. and it wasn't as much of a pie as it was. <laughs> I must have nibbled on it before. <laughs> well, we managed to make it back to the Snowbird Village before the temporal storm hit. And it wasn't that long a journey before we were actually back home via the translocator. Next time on the server and back home, I was with my generation four piggies and everything seemed so much easier with the cleaver. Just one hit and that was it. <coughs> as easy as that. So I could reduce my piggies to a manageable amount and have fresh meat whenever I wanted it. And I think the breeding aspect of it worked really well. I was really chuffed with it. So that's about it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to be finding out a lot more about chiseling. And I'm also going to do a little bit more exploring with ore and we find something quite exciting. Well, for me, it's my first time finding it. And I also start work on my smeltery. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.